Okay, this is Mark, and we are the Circle of the Dark Mother. Um, if you're not familiar with us, we um, basically use any tradition that works. We focus on Gnostic Kabbalah, and we work with the Dark Mother Goddesses. Um, Brandon and James are in the room with me, and I am going to turn it over to uh, Brandon, who is presenting tonight. So um, with that, take it away, Brandon. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Um, so today I wanted to like shed some light, so to speak, on uh, various aspects of Lilith. Um, people don't realize just what, uh, how she manifests in all of her ways. She manifests in fire, earth, air, and water. And she has many masks and manifestations. Um, the one that we're going to be discussing tonight is La Pequena. Some people call her Bequina, and um, she is the mermaid aspect within the Kimbanda Afro-Brazilian tradition. So if you ever uh, read in the Zohar, the Zohar says that there are many Liliths. Um, but then again, in other places, it says that there's only one Lilith and that they are one. So what does that mean? So Lilith, as the light comes down from Keter, and restricts itself to the various spheres. Um, if you remember the story of Lilith, when she fled the garden, she went to the Red Sea, where she gave birth to a host of spirits, and she also emanated Naama and Agrat and others uh, from her navel and her brow. So there are many um, aspects of Lilith, and it depends on where you are and what she's governing. Um, this aspect of Lilith is specific to the ocean. Um, and when you think of her, you can't think of her as like Ariel by any means. Uh, this is a terrifying um, aspect of Lilith. And if you know the legends of mermaids drowning sailors, using songs to lure people to their death, etc., this would be that type. Uh, she is actually the queen of the dark sea, the astral waters. Um, in Western mysticism, she's usually known as Kuliltu. And if you've ever heard of Cthulhu, that would be the male aspect, and Kuliltu would be the feminine aspect. Um, as Kuliltu to a Western magician, uh, they would know her as the dark mermaid, um, kind of like um, the sea witch, essentially. Um, so let me tell you how I met her. So I was scrolling through Facebook one day and I had been researching Palm Bajiras, of which Pequena is one, and I ran across the most gorgeous painting and I had no idea what it was other than I knew in my heart that it was Lilith. It had nothing to distinguish it specifically for Lilith, but as a devotee, I knew immediately this is her. So I reached out to the artist and acquired the painting. Um, typically, people work with her um, at the beaches or on cliffs. So I didn't have any of those, being that I'm in the USA and I'm uh, landbound and I'm not Brazilian. Um, so I used the painting, um, which is a living talisman of hers, to connect with her. Um, so what I did is I got the painting, and when I got it, um, I did some mushrooms and sat the painting in front of myself and for weeks on end uh, at night I would go in and I would sit with the painting and do meditation, chants, etc. Um, I'm going to read you a little bit from uh, Nicolas Frisbold's Pombagira book um, and this will give you like a description. Um, La Pequena, this means queen of the little water or queen of the little cemetery. In Kimbanda, the word Kalunga is translated as cemetery, whilst keeping in mind the astral ocean. Kalunga Pequena has her kingdom at the bottom of the ocean, where the spirits of those that have died are under her domain. She is said to appear in the form of a mermaid or a talking sea creature, and is accordingly related more to the native Indian myths of amphibian ship shifters and the sirens of Greek legend who lured sailors to their death with seductive songs. 
If you've ever seen the movie Dagon by Brian Yuzna, it has a depiction of the Princess of Dunwich, which gives an interesting and fairly accurate description of this Pombajira. She can be worked together with Yemia or Alhun in order to fortify her workings. She is said to be the queen of the whole tribe of Eshus and Pombajiras that live in the kingdoms at the bottom of the ocean and she manifests in dangerous, poisonous, and unusual sea creatures. For instance, monkfish, electric eels, puffer fish, and of course, sharks. She rules deep emotions and passions and can work in ways to cause a lost lover to return or a wayfaring husband to come home with passion in his eyes only for you. She can also be used in order to awaken the erotic and sensual urges in a man who has lost interest in you, as well as ignite new passion in a woman and reawaken her desires. A working with this Pombajira should be done at the ocean shore, preferably at a cliff where the water is deep. A place like the cliffs in Rio Grande Norte is an excellent place where her power manifests and is especially strong. In a place like this, you can make a working in order to rekindle the flames of passion and the object of your desire by following this ritual, which I'll read you a little bit in a second. So what I'm going to do is read you a famous, um, what it's called is a ponto cantado, cantado. And what that is, is a song that you sing in order for an invocation. It's kind of like an incantation but it gives you little clues about who she is. Um, I'm not going to read it in Portuguese, but I'm going to give you the English translation. Said anchor in the Kalunga, Pombajira, little Kalunga of the ocean. Oh, 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 Pombajira Kalunhina of the ocean. Sarava, o oh, Sarava. Pombajira Kalunginha of the ocean. Pombajira Kalunginha of the ocean. The graveyard of the ocean is at the celebration. Here at the point of power she came, brought Eshu to the celebration. It was indeed he who sent her. It was indeed he who sent her. When midnight strikes on this shore, Pombajira will come to search for her gifts. She is coming to do a working. Come Pombajira, Kalunginha of the ocean. Come, Pombajira, Kalung, Inha of the ocean. So since we don't have access to these areas in Brazil, um, I use the painting, but you can also use her Ponto Rascado, which is like her sigil. So you can print it out and use it. And what I did was is I sat up her image and I got some ocean water from a friend of mine and I poured it into a vessel in front of her Ponto Rascado and I lit a black candle on the left and a red candle on the right. Um, that's customary for Kimbanda. Um, for the very first time I worked with her and met her, I used an ally like mushrooms, but I only did it once and didn't need to do it again after I had made contact with her. Um, I set up an altar entirely made from the ocean. So for my wand, I used a piece of coral for my pentacle, I used a starfish. For my chalice, I used a seashell, um, on and on. So I made it up entirely of sea things. And I sat with her every single night uh, for weeks on end. And I still will occasionally. She is very terrifying. You have to think she's the queen of the underworld cemetery. So anyone who has died, you have to think of all the slave ships that were coming from Brazil, all the people who died in the ocean from those sinking or threw themselves overboard, planes that land in the ocean and all the people who die or who are lost at sea, um, sharks. So she is a very intimidating and terrifying aspect of Lilith and not one to be taken lightly. Um, when I was working with her, um, at first, she was very terrifying, and I could see her swimming around my chakras, like looking me over. Um, she was probably manipulating my energy centers as well so that I could have contact with her, so I could behold a vision of her. 
Uh, the reason why I did this is because I'm a devotee of Lilith, so I researched Lilith in all of her aspects. If you think there is a desert dwelling aspect of Lilith, usually associated with owls, um, on the earth, Mayama. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that I was experiencing Lilith in all of her glory, and this was a way for me to do it personally. Um, and also, it's so reaffirming to know that even outside of my tradition, Lilith pops up all over the place, all over the world, and she manifests oftentimes as these things that are scary and terrifying. But one of the greatest things that come from her, and I know Mark and James know as well, is the deep emotional healing that she facilitates because she brings all of this water that she is stirring up in us. That's her emotion. That's our emotion. And so she goes down into the depths of our emotion where all of those dark things are. We hide and she brings and lifts them all up to the surface so that we can deal with them, work through them. And her as our guide, she leads the way. Um, I'm going to read you one of the workings that you can do with her um, if you have a seashore, or you can do it the way that I suggest. But if you're going to do your own ritual, at least this will give you some insight. So you'll need the following. Um, three boxes of matches, 12 red roses or white. White roses are essentially always linked with Lilith. If you notice the Dante Gabriel Rossetti painting of her with red hair, she is flanked by white roses, um, those being a symbol of purity and also of death. Um, you'll need a lime, a lime um, pombagira blood oil, love powder, passion powder. You can even use Urzuli Frida or Madre Dolorosa from uh, Hoodoo, or Voodoo um, powder and oil. Seven red and white candles, one pack of cigarettes, a bottle of kush a kashaka, a bottle of muscatel wine, two glasses, and a terracotta plate. So the ritual should be done at the great hour, preferably on a Monday or Saturday, since the moon rules um, Monday and Saturn rules Saturday, and those are closely associated with Lilith. Um, you can also do the working with Yamia, um, because if Yemia is a very, very accessible goddess, and she can stabilize the ritual so that all hell doesn't break loose, essentially. Um, when you approach the ocean, you will simply light a candle for them, one blue and one red. Stamp the ground and strike it hard with your hand three times and ask permission from either of them to enter their kingdom. State your purpose the name of the spirit you speak to work with and ask that they walk with you and see that your desires are executed. Then you would go to an undisturbed place and arrange the ritual. You would draw her ponto or her sigil on a terracotta plate by softly chanting her name. Place three roses on the ponto and focus on your desire, telling her, Pumbajira da Kalunga, see me. Watch me, hear me, as I am here embraced by your power, and inspire in so-and-so deep desire as deep as it is your power. You then throw the three roses into the water, take the rest of the roses and the kashaka, and walk backwards nine steps, then pour some kashaka on the ninth step, and walk towards the place of the offering again, pouring some drops of kashaka with each step. Say with each step, one step closer to arouse the passion in so-and-so. And with the ninth and last step is done and the passion of fire begun. Anoint the candles with Pumbajira oil and light them while singing to her. You would sing that song that I was reading to you earlier. Place the nine roses on the plate together with the muscatel wine pouring it over them. Pour the other powders over the roses as well as smear some of it on yourself. Take 12 cigarettes and light them around her offering and smoke one for yourself. In the center of the offering, present the lime and ask her to infuse the lime with the power of passion and seduction. 
You would then pour the wine into two glasses and present one in the center of the roses and drink the other. While doing this, you would sprinkle kashaka around the roses and let the bottle stand open in midst them. When the ritual is finished, you would take the kashaka and lime with you, and with this, prepare a caparina with sugar for the object of your desire. If the object of your desire does not drink, use the lime to make a juice and add three drops of kashaka. This ritual should be performed three times before its full effect is experienced. It is good if you can wash off the scent and such in the ocean on the way back from the ritual under the supervision of Yamiya or Ogun and make a final prayer to Pombajira in the ocean. <clears throat> so what I really think is so fascinating about this is how this person is obviously doing this ritual to reawaken the passion that another person has lost for them or doesn't feel. But she can awaken the desire within us to feel this way for ourselves um, in a spiritual way um, and not in a selfish way. Um, she facilitates deep emotional healing, um, setting up an altar with these sea things with her ponto is a powerful way. And you'll notice, I noticed with her when I started singing her song that I would be doing random things throughout the day and I would hear it echoed back to me. So I really knew that she was with me in the astral sea of my spirit body. Um, she very much so is a mermaid. So anything associated with mermaids, uh, she loves beautiful things. Um, if you notice in that, they say you can use Mater Dolorosa powder or oil. Um, Mater Dolorosa or Azuli Frida um, in voodoo is very famous for being beautiful, uh, loving, beautiful things, beautiful perfumes, and she is no exception. She really loves all of these beautiful sea things. I use a seashell for her as a bell, um, so I have a whole thing set up for her. Um, uh, like I was saying earlier, uh, in Western tradition, we know her as Kuliltu, and you have to think her name in Hebrew is Lilatu, so the Kuliltu obviously designates her as a water spirit, and then the Lilatu aspect, this just simply designates Lilith of the ocean. So I... I think that's all I have for right now, unless anybody has. Do you want to go to the next slide then? Yeah. I can talk about the next slide. If this computer will work, there we go. Okay, so <laughs> this is the image of her that I have that I use for all of my workings. Um, if you notice, there are lilies that are growing out of the abyss at the bottom, and those lilies signify the beauty that comes from the horror that we experience. Um, and you would also know as she uplifts these emotions, she turns all of these dark and hostile things inside of us, like our self-hatred, our self-doubt, a feeling of lack, damage that we've experienced from other people in relationships. She uplifts all of this is that <clears throat> that's at the bottom of our astral consciousness and our astral sea, so to speak. If you look, when I'm doing um, working with her, I often see the dead um, in the water, all the souls of the lost at sea that are wandering about. And she takes care of these souls. She's eventually going to lead these souls to their enlightenment and liberation. Um, if you notice in the center, there's three pitchforks. That is her sigil. Um, it has two S's and three prongs um, on three pillars. Um, and if you notice, Lilith is um, the central pillar in Gamliel and of uh, Nukva Malkut. And so this is also designating that. Um, you can see the serpent is pointed downwards. And as soon as I saw that serpent, I knew that this was Lilith. And then the black halo is her dark wisdom, her enlightened consciousness. Um, water lilies, white, um, red roses, um, 
Also, when you give her wine, have some for yourself. When you give her a cigarette, have one for yourself. Her direction corresponds with uh, west, which is obviously water, and it is also the gate of death in mysticism. Um, if you don't want to work with her as La Pequina or La Pequena, you can work with her as Kuliltu. And her chant is Allah, la la, la lil, lola, la lu, kulil to. So I think that's all I had. That's awesome. Thank you, Brandon. That was really cool. Um, I know a little bit about Kenya, but I learned a lot. So thank you. You're so anybody on, um, I'm still recording. So if you don't want to be on the recording, um, just know I will, I will stop that in a minute if people want to ask questions without it. But does anyone have any questions they want to ask or comments or whatever um, while we're on recording? Okay, let me take us off recording.